treasures on page 10. How rare and wondrous it is to have been born into human life, and now I live it. How rare and wondrous it is to be able to listen to the Buddha Dharma, and now I am able to hear it. If I do not transcend the world of delusion in this life, when will I ever attain spiritual liberation? May I, along with the entire Sangha, with sincere heart and mind, rely on that which can be truly relied on in life, the three treasures. I rely on the Buddha. May I, along with all sentient beings, awaken to the great path of my entire being and discover the highest aspiration which is to become a Buddha. I rely on the Dharma. And I, along with all sentient beings, deeply reflect on the meaning of the sutras and gain wisdom that is as deep and vast as the ocean. I rely on the Sangha. And I, along with all sentient beings, become one Sangha of the heart, able to move forward and live with the dynamic spirit that is hindered by the the unsurpassed, deep, and wondrous dharma, even in millions of cults, is extremely difficult to encounter, but now I am able to experience and embrace it. May I come to understand and revere the true meaning of Tathagata. Continue with Sahaja on page 29 and Sutra chanting by Reverend Indo. We will be chanting Sahaja today on page 33. So page 29 and page 33.
Our guest speaker today is Reverend Endo, Michael Endo. He is a Bay Area person, born in Oakland, went to Oakland Buddhist Temple, um, has been very active in the Buddhist Temple. He and his family had close ties with the Buddhist Church of Oakland as he was growing up. He received his Hokuto ordination in 2002 and his Kai Kyoshi ordination in 2007. Currently, Reverend Endo is the BCA Executive Assistant to the Bishop. occasion of your uh, bishop's memorial service for the BCA. I'd like to begin with a reading, so if you could please join me in that show. <clears throat> How joyous I am, Butoku Shinda, disciple of Shakamuni. Rare is it to come upon the sacred scriptures from the westward land of India, and the commentaries of the masters of China and Japan, but now I have been able to encounter them. Rare is it to hear them, but already I have been able to hear. Reverently entrusting myself to the teaching, practice, and realization that are the true essence of the Pure Land Way, I am especially aware of the profundity of the Tathagata's benevolence, and here I rejoice in what I have heard and extol what I have attained from the Jogashin and uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see all of you here. Uh, it's good to be back here at uh, in Manji uh, on this occasion of your of the uh, BCA uh, late bishops uh, memorial service. Uh, first, um, as we begin uh, my Dharma message, uh, I would just like to uh, take a moment. For all of us to put our hands together in God's show for just a moment of silence uh, to remember those who are suffering on the island of Maui and to all of those in Hawaii and around the world, including us here in the BCA, who are watching uh, in shock at what is taking place in Maui and especially in the town of Lahaina. Uh, so please join me in a moment of silence for God's show. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to thank Daryl. Where did Daryl go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> thank you, Daryl, for the uh, invitation to uh, uh, be here again on uh, this occasion of the uh, BCA uh, Late Bishops Memorial Service. Um, we gather uh, for the purpose of remembering, uh, just as the name says for this service uh, to remember uh, those bishops who have passed on, uh, who have served uh, reverently for the BCA uh, over the years. And uh, throughout the uh, history of BCA, for those who may not be familiar, but uh, uh, we have had 15 individuals who have led our BCA as bishop. Uh, and so today we remember through the memorial portion of the service, the following bishops uh, of the BCA. First, Bishop Shue Sonoda, uh, Sonoda, who served from 1899 to 1900. Bishop Tetsue Mizuki, who served 1900-1901. Bishop Kentori uh, Hori, 1902 to 1905. Bishop Koyu Uchida, 1905 to 1923. Bishop Hosho Sasaki, 1926 to 1928. Bishop Kenju Masuyama, 1930-1938. Bishop Ryotai Matsukage, from 1938 to 1948. Bishop Enryo Shigefuji, 1948 to 1958. Uh, Bishop Shinsho Hanayama, 
1959 to 1968, and uh, Bishop Kenyu Tsuji, uh, 1968 to 1981. Um, fortunately, of our past 15 bishops of the PCA, Five are still well uh, and are still with us. Uh, and you, you're all familiar, I'm sure, with these five. Maybe some of you are familiar with the, some of the names that I read previously. But uh, of course, we have uh, uh, Bishop Sagan Yamaoka, Reverend Yamaoka, Reverend Hakugun Watanabe, uh, Reverend Koshin Ogui, Reverend Kodo Umezu, and of course, uh, our current BCA Bishop, uh, Reverend Marvin Harada. So since 1996, uh, I've had the honor and the privilege of serving directly under uh, the current and the past three bishops uh, of the BCA as uh, secretary uh, and currently as an executive assistant uh, to the bishops, uh, to Bishop Parada. Um, and so, you know, having had the honor of uh, uh, serving under uh, a number of our bishops uh, of the BCA, uh, I just wanted to share with you some of the insights I've gained over the years uh, from uh, a couple of them. Um, unfortunately, you know, I didn't know directly uh, anybody, any of the bishops from Bishop Sonoda, the first bishop, um, through, I did know Tsuji Sensei, but I was still <laughs> quite, well, sort of young. I wasn't as active in BC, so, uh, but I did know Tsuji Sensei. Um, but uh, I just wanted to uh, share with you some insight of a couple of them that uh, I have been able to serve under directly. Past uh, uh, almost almost thirty years of the BCA. Okay. So the first uh, bishop I'd like to share some thoughts about is the Bishop uh, Koshin Ogui. I'm sure all of you know Ogui Sensei, right? Um, I served Bishop Ogui from two thousand four to two thousand twelve, and serving under Ogui Sensei, um, obviously I'm there every day, pretty much with him in the office, and so. One of the many stories that uh, Ogui Sensei would tell me from time to time is the time that when he started with BCA and he began serving at the Cleveland Buddhist Temple. Cleveland Buddhist Temple. Um, and you know, hearing all the stories from Ogui Sensei, whenever he told a story, all I could think was um, how always Sensei was always thinking out of the box. Even from his early days, even from his early ministry, and those of you who know Sensei, you're shaking your head, right? You, have, you know Sensei's thinking, and um, that's all I can think. You know, Sensei's always thinking out of the box uh, in order to share the Dharma with us. Um, and again, so this was uh, during his early days when he first started serving at the uh, Cleveland Buddhist Temple. This is back in the uh, 60s. Um, and so he would tell us, you know, duly assigned, sitting in the office at the temple. Uh, he received numerous phone calls uh, throughout the week, you know, on a daily basis. And the common question people would call when they hear it's a Buddhist temple is, do you offer Zen meditation or do you offer any kind of meditation? And so Sensei, in the beginning, uh, he would just answer, oh, no, I'm sorry, we don't have meditation here at our temple. So that was the end of that conversation. Uh, and so this would go on and on for a little while. After a while, Ogui Sensei began to think to himself, you know, out of, say, 10 calls that I receive, seven or eight are regarding meditation, and I tell them no, and so the conversation ends right there. He said, he thought to himself, uh, if I keep turning away eight out of 10 people that call this temple, uh, the temple will never grow, right? the Sangha will never grow. And so this was when Sensei, began to incorporate um, Zen-type Zen meditation uh, into his ministry there at Cleveland. Right? Um, and if you, if you know Ogui Sensei and his background, of course, you know, well-versed in Jodo Shinshu, he comes from a Jodo Shinshu uh, generation of uh, minister of the temple. Uh, but uh, Sensei, Ogui Sensei was well-versed also in, in Zen Buddhism. You know, many of his uh, Colleagues, teachers were very famous people, you know, Suzuki, uh, people like that. Um, and so, being well versed in meditation, um, he thought, I can't. We can't just turn away these people that are calling the temple with interest in Buddhism. Right? Uh, 
Um, and it's funny because his sensei's incorporation of meditation into his uh, ministry at the Cleveland Buddhist Temple, um, it, put him, it put him in a lot of hot water with certain people throughout, throughout, his, throughout the time he's been serving as a, he was serving as a minister. But, um, and I think that's because those that criticized sensei, they didn't completely understand uh, his intention or his approach uh, to inco by incorporating meditation, quote, meditation uh, into sharing of the Buddha's teachings uh, with the congregation. Right? Um, you know, we learn our Jodo Shinshu tradition, we don't so-called uh, practice meditation. Uh, yet, Sensei's model throughout his entire throughout his entire ministry, I think, but he really incorporated it into his time when he was serving as bishop of the BCA. But he always, always stated this particular model uh, as bishop. And the, the Japanese, those of you that may be familiar with the Nihongo, but he always said, Anchu mosaku suru koto wo ikigai to shi, shiko saku go wo osorezu. Anchu mosaku suru koto wo ikigai to shi, shiko saku go wo osorezu. Or, to challenge oneself amidst the uncertainties of work and life and not be afraid to try new things or make mistakes along the way. This was Ogui Sensei's uh, model. Uh, in other words, Ogui Sensei wanted to, he's saying, let's embrace, let's incorporate the teachings of the Buddha, the Nembutsu teaching of Shingan Shonin, with this model in mind. Uh, open our hearts and minds to hear the voice of the Buddha. In, in all ways, in all ways. Um, there was never a time when Ogui Sensei advocated quote Zen type meditation practice uh, as some sort of a uh, petitionary practice right? uh, or a replacement for our members' teaching in our temples, in our BCA temples. Uh, so, and, you know, in other words, he never said. Um, you know, forget about Nembu's teaching. Let's just do Zen meditation, uh, and you'll achieve enlightenment and realize Shinji uh, in that way. You know, Sensei, Sensei never he never said that. Right? Um, rather, his idea of practicing, bringing the practice of meditation into the temples, was his way to prepare us to hear uh, and to receive uh, the teachings of Shinji. Uh, it was just, a, in other words, it was just a way to get people into the door, right? practice a little bit of meditation, settle everybody's mind, so that we can then begin to hear and to receive uh, Shinra Shonin's Nembu's teaching. So that was, that was uh, Ogui Sensei's, I think, intention in his heart. Uh, this is what his heart and mind were. Uh, today, we have our current bishop, Bishop Reverend Margaret Harada. Uh, as you know, Bishop Harada took office uh, April 1st, 2020, right at the start of the pandemic, right? And we all uh, had to shut down. Um, so <laughs> April 1st, 2020, I never, I, I've known Harada Sensei many years, so I, you know, I, I know, of course, who he was. And, uh, but uh, I had never seen, I never saw Harada Sensei in person until I think it was spring, uh, spring or summer of uh, 2022, when we, when we finally started to Reopen, and they said, you know, we can all go back into the office. And so, uh, Reverend Narada started to come up from his home in uh, Orange County, Anaheim, uh, and uh, we would start to work uh, at the Jodo Shinshu Center together. But uh, it, was, it was certainly, and I'm sure for all of you, it was really a surreal uh, time in our lives, right? But the Reverend Harada, uh, as you may know, uh, is our first Sansei, third generation uh, bishop. And those of you who know uh, Reverend Harada, or Reverend Marv, as we all call him, that's what he wants us to call him. But, uh, you know, Sensei is very easygoing, uh, always smiling, ready to listen. Uh, and I think in many ways, like the Ogui Sensei, uh, always ready to try new things uh, and, and not, not be afraid to make mistakes along the way. So when Reverend Harada, you know, even before becoming bishop, he had uh, this tendency to want to bring people into BCA, you know, have people learn about Nimbus teaching. So uh, as bishop, he began to conduct uh, online gatherings with 
we see uh, members, um, particularly those who live outside uh, any vicinity of a BCA temple. And so uh, currently we have over, I'm, I wasn't quite too sure, I didn't have my notes when I was scribbling this down at home when I was preparing my message, but uh, I think there's well over 25, maybe even 30, 35, uh, in, we call them BCA individual members. In other words, they don't belong to a, a, any BCA temple because there's no temple near them. But uh, BCA created this program where you can join BCA as a member, as an individual member. So, you know, fortunately, we have uh, well over 35 maybe members throughout the United States. And so, um, these gatherings, you know, they take place uh, once a month, first Wednesday of the month. And at those gatherings, Reverend Harada's uh, uh, practice is to provide some sort of reading uh, to everybody ahead of time. Uh, and, and most of the time it's from contemporary books, you know, today modern day books, uh, or articles that he's read somewhere along the way. Uh, and then we share it with uh, all of the members and you know, they have a chance to read and to review it. And then we meet on the first Wednesday and uh, we just we discuss the, the reading that since he's provided. And so, you know, these gatherings have proven to be a, a wonderful way of reaching out to our members who are not able to gather like us regularly uh, at BCA Temple. Uh, and it gives the members, these, these new members, an opportunity to uh, talk face-to-face -face with each other and with uh, Bishop Harada uh, and, you know, in a relaxed and informal setting uh, to simply hear the Dharma and how stories or articles, many of which are maybe not even Buddhist related, uh, but how they can relate to us in the Buddhist context. And, you know, Reverend Harada is uh, wonderful at being able to uh, show us, you know, why he chose this particular article, why he feels uh, this is this is a, a good way of viewing what uh, Joe Shinshu uh, teaching is telling us, or what, what the Buddhist teaching is telling us. And so, uh, just a few days ago, I'm sure many of you may have already seen it, uh, but Reverend Harada brought the Dharma to us uh, with the events that have taken place in Hawaii, uh, particularly Maui and Lahaina. Uh, and the statement that the Reverend Harada made, uh, which appears on the BCA website, in reaction to those events, uh, is so, he, he sent it to me and a couple of others uh, in the administration to review. He said, you know, what, do you, what do you think about this message? And he sent it to us. I thought the message was so poignant, right? Um, and it, I think it speaks to Harada Sensei's character uh, and his way of finding the right words uh, that touch our hearts uh, as it relates to current and real events. Right? Uh, so, those of you who may not be aware of what Reverend Harada wrote uh, on the BCA website uh, in response to the, uh, the uh, catastrophe, the, the deadly fire in Maui. Sensei wrote, we are all watching in great sadness and horror the loss of life and destruction of homes and communities in Maui, Hawaii, due to the devastating wildfires. Our thoughts go to all there who have lost loved ones, homes, businesses, temples, and churches in their community. What a tremendous loss for everyone. He goes on to tell the story. I recall a story from the Jataka tales in our Buddhist tradition. Once there was a huge forest fire and all of the animals in the forest were running away from the fire for safety. One little bird was flying into a lake, dipping its wings in water, then flying over the forest fire, dropping little drops of water to fight the fire. Back and forth, the bird flew. The other animals shouted to the little bird, what are you doing? You can't put out the fire that way. The little bird shouted back, I may not be able to stop the fire, but this is all that I can do. I must try. In the face of such devastation, we will all do what we can, whether it is to contribute to the disaster relief, to share our encouragement, or for those in Maui to begin to rebuild one step at a time, doing what they can do. When Reverend Harada shared again his, his message uh, and asked for our opinion, comments, all I could say to the sensei, I called him up and I said, you know, this was perfect. Your message is perfect uh, at this moment. Uh, and I 
told him that nothing more needed to be said. And so, in my opening reading, I quoted the preface to the Kyogyo Shinsho, uh, what is probably the Shinra Shonen's, uh, one of his greatest writings. Uh, and I'll repeat it here. Shinra Shonen wrote, How joyous I am, Butoku Shinra, disciple of Shakamuni. Rare is it to come upon the sacred scriptures from the westward land of India and the commentaries of the masters of China and Japan, but now I have been able to encounter them. Rare is it to hear them, but I already have been able to hear them. Reverently entrusting myself to the teaching, practice, and realization are the true essence of the pure land way. I am especially aware of the profundity of the Tathagata's benevolence, and here I rejoice in what I have heard and extol what I have attained. Shin Shoni, our founder, he learned, learned from and reflected upon the teachings from many, many teachers throughout his life. But in particular, he revered uh, the seven masters from India, China, and Japan. And because of Shin Shoni, we too are able to uh, hear their words through Shin Shoni's writings, such as the Shoshinye or the Kyogyo Shinsho, Tanisho. You know, we're all familiar with these uh, wonderful writings that Shin Shoni has left for us. And like Shin Shoni, we too have many, many teachers. Uh, our senseis, who over the nearly 125 year history of BCA, uh, have worked to share the Onenbu's teaching and the Buddha Dharma with us in their own. Uh, unique and special ways. Many of you have grown up with a number of senseis here in, in Manju. Um, I didn't know I didn't know all of their senseis, but uh, uh, I did know a great number of them, and so I know uh, you, you too have had many many senseis, many teachers to share your memories with you. Um, but of those teachers, for us here in BCA. It is especially those teachers who led from the top. It was those bishops of the BCA, uh, all the bishops that I've named uh, the opening of my message. One more bishop that I've had, I had the privilege of uh, working under was uh, Reverend uh, Mezzi, Reverend Kodo Mezzi. Yeah, you all, you all know the sensei. Um, I served with Reverend Mezzi when he was bishop from 2012 2020. I neglected to put it here, but before 2012, I also worked uh, 10 years with the Mezzi Sensei at the Oakland Temple, which is where we were both working at the time. And then in 2012, when Bishop uh, Watanabe, uh, not 2012, when Watanabe Sensei became Bishop in 1996, uh, Watanabe Sensei pulled Reverend Mezzi and myself out of Oakland and said, I need you to come work at headquarters in the Bishop's office. <laughs> So I, I became secretary at that time, this is 1996, and Reverend Mezzi became the executive assistant to the Bishop of Manada. So that's, that's how, our, how far our relation goes back. And actually, I didn't write this in my notes, but I think you have a copy of the BCA 75th anniversary, double set. It's a huge gray hardcover uh, book. Um, Dr. Kent's shaking his head. Yes, you have it. So uh, in the second volume, the thinner volume, it's a pictorial of the BCA's 75th anniversary, which big event took place in 1974. And he's always he's always reminding me that you know we didn't we didn't know each other of course back in 1974. He had just he came from Japan, but um, if you look in that book of the pic, all the pictures of all the events, the uh, the, uh, the main service, you know there was I don't know how many maybe a hundred ministers there in my procession. And one of the photos is Reverend Mezzi, who was at the beginning of the uh, procession. And the picture right below was my last Ochigo, my last opportunity to part, uh, take part in Ochigo, the parade. And so my photo is right below his picture in that book. So he always says, see, we, we have a connection already. <laughs> we were already meant to know each other. But uh, you can look at that photo later. Dr. Ken. You know, with Reverend Umezu uh, as bishop too, and, and just as a resident minister of the temple, he also had a great way of uh, having just the right, just the right words to say uh, at various occasions. And 
And Reverend Umezu would uh, often uh, begin his Dharma messages for funerals or for memorial services with a wonderful, wonderful phrase. Uh, and I'll never forget. Uh, and it was a little a simple statement, but I think it touched uh, deeply to the heart of what our Nenbutsu teaching is trying to tell us or what it means for us. And so he would start his messages with this, this uh, statement. I call out to you, there is no answer. But when I put my hands in Gashio, you are able to meet again in spirit. I call out to you that there is no answer. But when I put my hands together in Gashio, you are able to meet again in spirit. Such a beautiful, beautiful opening phrase to begin a Dharma message. Um, you know, words are often difficult to come by, uh, particularly times of sadness or of loss. Um, but such a statement, I think, reminds us what is true and real in our lives, just as Shina Shon reminds us uh, in his writing, the Tani Shon. I'm sure you've heard, you may have heard this uh, section of Tani Shon, but Shina Shon writes, I know nothing at all of good or evil, for if I could know thoroughly, as Anugata Thagata knows, that an act was good, then I would know good. If I could know thoroughly as the Tathagata knows that an act was evil, then I would know evil. But with a foolish being full of blind passions, in this fleeting world, this burning house, all matters without exception are empty and false, totally without truth or sincerity. The Nenbutsu alone is true. I think when Reverend, when Reverend Umezu shares this statement, I call out to you, there is no answer. But when I put my hands together in Gashō, you are able to meet again in the Spirit. It's that, but when I put my hands together in Gashō, it's not just putting your hands together in Gashō, but this and the Nembutsu that comes out from our heart, whether we verbally say it or not, but there is no answer when I call out to you, but when I put my hands together in Gashō and think of the members of Namwari Namas, we are able to meet again in the spirit. Uh, that's what I think is implied there in the heart of Gashō. So when we put our hands together in Gashō and think or think of or recite the members, we are able to meet uh, again in spirit with that or those we think are lost. And I think this is true for those past bishops we remember today. Uh, the majority of those who have served as bishop, most of us, I think, do not know uh, of the 15, but we can call out to them, and, and we can call out to them, but there is no physical answer. But when we put our hands together in Gashō, through our Onenbutsu teaching, through our Onenbutsu recitation, we are able to meet with the heart and spirit of their leadership, with their great wish, their sincere desire to share with us the teachings of Shin And on And uh, on this final thought, and in the spirit of, as I mentioned, how Reverend Harada uses current events uh, as a way to share the Dharma with us, I just wanted to close with this short story uh, that also touched my heart. Um, you know, we usually don't expect the goofiest Comedians, right, <laughs> to say the most poignant things. Um, but this this came from uh, Martin Short. I always know the comedian Martin Short. Um, Martin Short, <clears throat> he writes in his memoir, uh, highlights and, and highlights a sensitive and a touching side uh, to his life. Um, and when it appeared in the article, it said, uh, "What he writes may bring you to tears." So this is what he writes. So uh, it said uh, in the funny man's new book, I must say, my life as a humble comedy legend. The Emmy Award-winning actor opens up about his life, his love, and loss. His musings about his continued relationship with his late wife Nancy Goldman, who he lost to ovarian cancer in 2010, are incredibly emotional. Like so many who've lost. The ones they love. Short is keeping Nancy as a major part of his life. 
He writes in the book, So some nights, when I'm really missing her, I'll grab a rum and a coke at twilight and sit on the couch on our front porch, or perhaps upstairs on the balcony off of our bedroom with the Pacific Ocean in view, and I'll call out, Hey, Nan! Forming the words, just feel good in his throat. Short and his beloved wife met in the mid-1970s, and he explains it was basically love at first sight. The two were married for 36 years and had three children. The actor explains that just because you can't see his late love doesn't mean she isn't there. These are talks. Go on internally, not out loud. You won't find me sitting out there chattering away, switching seats schizophrenically, <laughs> uh, play acting both parts. But we do talk, Nancy and I. And I can totally hear where she agrees with me or where she disagrees. And this I believe is Martin Short. This is how Martin Short meets again with his wife, Nancy, uh, in spirit. Uh, and I think, to me, maybe not to him, but this is this Nembutsu moment. Uh, don't think I'm equating Nembutsu with rum and coke, <laughs> so, <laughs> which I'm not, but uh, I, think, I think this was uh, Martin Short's. Just close with that story, uh, something that is uh, today, kind of today's news, but yet you can find the Dharma, you can find the Nemus in, uh, in all of these type of stories, just as Reverend Harada uh, emphasizes to us. So, uh, again, I'd like to thank Daryl and thank all of you for this opportunity to be with you on this occasion of the uh, BCA Late Bishops Memorial Service. Uh, I would like to close with the reading of uh, Linda Short's letter, uh, the Linda Short. settled by the Buddha through the inconceivable vow power. The state we thus attain is described as with awakening of a single thought of entrusting, we join those in the stage of the truly settled. Recitation of the Nembutsu thereafter should be understood to be the Nembutsu as an expression of gratitude for the Tathagata's benevolence for settling our birth in the pure land, humbly and respectfully. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Sensei. That was a great drama talk. Thank you for sharing some history and your experiences. Very enlightening. Thank you. Please stand for the closing gala. Shinshu Shuka on page 156. 
in the ground floor. you may have received an email if you uh, have provided your email address uh, to us and uh, so I sent out an email regarding uh, some support to our Hawaii Dharma friends and it came in the form of a forwarded email from Reverend Endo uh, for the bishop and so in the main uh, letter portion uh, there was a link that you could go to for the bca.kindful.com uh, uh, for uh, donations that could be made. And then as an attachment, 
there was also a letter um, from Home, Home, uh, Home Association of Hawaii, and they have more direct uh, link to uh, Honganji in Hawaii, um, and a GoFundMe also link. So I'm going to post these on the wall in there if you did not receive the email or get the attachment. So I just thought we should consider our, uh, our Sangha friends in uh, Hawaii, and especially on Maui. So it's open for um, donations for the more immediate time period. And then eventually we may be trying to do um, some sort of um, fundraising event in the community, but we'll have to see when is still in the works. Thank you. If there are no other announcements, that will conclude our service for today. I would like to thank Reverend Endo for his great Dharma talk and nice visiting with us today. Thank you to Daryl Yagi for setting up the Umaji and the Lady Concho. Thank you to Kent Matsuda for our music accompaniment. And thank you to the August Koban for the flowers and the offerings. Everyone is invited for light refreshments in the hall. If you have not had a chance to do Oshoko, you are invited to do so before the Yuhundo. Thank you for attending today's service. Thank you.